1965, an American plane designated YF-12A set four world records. One for sustained altitude and three for speed, including a mark of 2,070 miles per hour. While the achievement was hailed in Washington, it did not add any joy to the annual May Day festivities in Moscow. Following the high-profile record-setting flight, the aircraft receded into its customary obscurity. Record-breaking has been the public face of one of history's most mysterious families of aircraft, the Lockheed Blackbirds. These planes were so ahead of their time that radical new methods and materials were developed to build them. The technology they employed and their achievements astounded even the experts of the day. The Blackbirds were so far ahead of their time that they seemed unreal. The planes, and in fact the entire program, was so secret that their existence had not even been suspected. In February 1964, when President Johnson officially revealed the existence of the plane, the experts were astonished and the general public uncomprehending. The confusion was further heightened when the president mistakenly referred to the plane as the A-11, when in fact it was the A-12. Further confusion arose when photos of the wrong plane, a fighter version under development, were circulated. Four months later, a third aircraft in the family, the SR-71, was announced. The world's first aircraft to cruise at speeds above Mach 3 came from Lockheed, in a series of proposals for a high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. Limited approval to develop the twelfth of these submissions was given, hence the number A-12. The date was the 29th of August, 1959. On the 30th of January, 1960, an order was placed for 12 examples. Literally everything on the aircraft would have to be invented from scratch, right down to the paint. Yet the first flight would take place only two and a half years later. The original concept gave rise to four models. Following the reconnaissance A-12 version, the design appeared as a long-range interceptor for the Aerospace Defense Command, called the YF-12. The refined reconnaissance version, the SR-71, emerged in 1961. There has also been a smaller espionage drone version, the D-21, which is still almost totally shrouded in official secrecy. The security surrounding these planes over the years is not in any way surprising. They have been centers for the most secret activity, and as a result, have been secrets themselves. Facts about them have been part of an envelope of carefully controlled information. For example, the records they sacked in 1965 were no reflection of their full capability. The figures were simply sufficient to be radically new marks. This was suspected by some at the time, and demonstrated later. The planes have shown more of their capacity and set new records since. Typically deceptive, the program to develop the Blackbirds was given the code name Oxford obviously conjuring up a mental image of lumbering wooden wheels in a slow, lurching motion. An ironic reference, given the abilities of these planes. Some figures about the aircraft are available. 
An SR-71 is 107 feet long. Its wingspan is 55 feet, and it stands over 18 feet high. It carries no armaments. Instead, its payload was made up of cameras and sensors. Empty, it weighed over 67,000 pounds, and its maximum takeoff weight was given as over 172,000. It could speed along with its 3,500 pounds of reconnaissance equipment for an unrefueled range of 3,250 miles. However, figures are not necessarily facts. They serve more, perhaps, as guidelines. For example, that 32 SR-71s were built, in all likelihood, is correct. But it is really only a confirmation that at least that number were built. The Blackbirds originated at the beginning of the Cold War from political needs in an era of growing uncertainty. Ironically, they reflected the danger of security. The unease generated by the Soviets' nuclear capability demanded more intelligence getting. An absence of facts always encourages speculation, and speculation concerning the bomb has a tendency to generate paranoia. President Eisenhower promoted an open skies policy to permit reconnaissance overflights. The Soviets declined. However, the proposal was not simply a polite inquiry. It was also an effective declaration of intent. The U.S. would be taking a look at whatever was there, no matter what the residents might think. The nuclear stakes were seen as too high to permit any other course. All that was needed was a plane to do the job. In the early 1950s, the United States had a real requirement to overfly Russia to find out the status of their development of long-range missiles. There was no airplane in the United States or in the world that could safely overfly Russia at that time. Lockheed made an unsolicited proposal to Trevor Gardner, the Undersecretary for Research and Development for the Air Force, uh, on a very specialized airplane. We promised to build within eight months uh, 20 airplanes for $22 million, including spares, that would do the job required. The program was turned over to the CIA, who then chose Mr. Richard Bissell, an economist, to run the program. Richard Bissell became a very good engineer, and he not only was our director on the U-2 program, but he also followed through with the development of the Mark III Blackbird. When I first met Kelly, I had been working for nearly a year for Alan Dulles. I joined uh, Alan's organization early in 1954. Toward the end of November, I was summoned one afternoon into Alan's office. And I was told, with absolutely no prior warning or knowledge, that one day previously, President Eisenhower 